Get everyone, B Asian Day here. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing very well and feeling healthy and safe in your part of the world. Over here, doing all right. Starting to heat up a little bit because we're starting to get closer to our summer. Uh, we probably can see a little bit of our sweat here, but we'll survive through it. Anyway, today we're going to do the in depth review of this Lenovo ThinkPad X13 Yoga. It's a 13 inch business class laptop, and being a yoga, it means it's a two in one. So it can actually convert to its tablet. So you pretty much just flip the screen around and then this also has a nice little party trick is on the bottom here is also the garage pen. So you can actually pretty much pull it out and then take your notes or do some drawings and pop it back in. So it's not magnetic, it's actually garage into the laptop itself so you won't lose it. I love that feature there. Now we're going to actually to look into the temperatures as well as the fan noise of this laptop and we'll also look at those features as well and also look at of course its performance. Now I will be putting timestamps along this video so you can actually skip to the sections that you might be interested to you to hopefully help you out. Let's have a look at the ports. Starting on the left hand side of the computer we've got two Thunderbolt ports that's USB-C port and that is 3.2 Gen 2. Now you can use any of these two ports to charge the computer. And then after that is the side doctor connect port, which is for Lenovo docks. And you can get the optional ethernet adapter for Lenovo, which will actually plug into this special port as well. And then after that is a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, which is type A, and it does support power share as well. And then the headphone jack, and then the optional smart card reader. Looking on the right hand side of the computer, starting on the right, we've got the security lock slot, and then a HDMI port, which is version 1.4B, and then a 3.2 Gen 1 type A port, and then a micro SD card reader, and then the power button, and then the garage Lenovo Pro Pen. What does X13 Yoga can be configured with? Now with the processor wise, it is using the 10th generation Intel Core. Now you can either configure with an i5 or an i7, and they're both four cores. And as for the RAM wise, it can go up to a maximum of 16 gigs of RAM, and that is soldered to the system board. So you need to select the correct one, because you can't upgrade later on once you've got it. As for storage wise, it has one slot of M.2, so you can actually put the SSD hard drive in there. And as for the graphics wise, it is using the Intel integrated graphics. As for display wise, there are four options that you can choose from. So three of them are the full HD options. Now, first off is the full HD, which is the normal version, that which is the one I've got right here. And of course, it has multi-touch, being a touch screen, of course, so I can actually do the pencil port and this one is rated at 300 nits of brightness. Now there is also a low power mode version and that's rated at 400 nits of brightness and there's also a privacy guard screen version. Now what the privacy guard screen is basically limiting the viewing angle to pretty much the user so you don't have prying eyes on the left and right side of the screen so it's when you're more working on sensitive data. Now that one is rated at 500 nits of brightness so that's pretty bright there and there is a UHD version of this one here and this is 400 nits of brightness. All the displays have a glossy finish to the screen and that's because it needs to actually take the impact of the pen. And the X13 Yoga does come with the latest Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 for your connectivity. As for the webcam, there are two options. They're both 720p webcams and this one I've got the normal one which actually has the privacy guard here and it's just made of a little flick of a switch and you'll actually see a physical shutter go over the webcam and you'll also see a nice little red dot just to indicate that it is currently being covered and it's also disabled as well so you won't have prying eyes or when it accidentally turns on. Now the other second version is the IR version and again it's a 720p webcam. As for the keyboard it houses the good famous ThinkPad keyboard, which I really do love. It's got good key travel and good tactile feel to each individual key, as well as a very nice smooth texture on each individual key as well. And there's good spacing between each keys, and you'll find you'll just enjoy typing on this keyboard. Now, the only fault I can find about the ThinkPad keyboard, now this is if you're new to the ThinkPad range, is the famous function key and the control key are flipped around. Now you can actually can change that in BIOS or 
or also in the Windows software under Lenovo keyboard settings. So you can swap that around if you want to get used to the normal way of doing things or you can just get used to the, having the function key on the very bottom left hand corner. Now in 2020, they have actually include the video conferencing buttons that's up there, which is in the F9 to F11, and therefore video conference in the F12 key is something that you can actually just customize to anything you desire. And the keyboard does have backlight. Now, to actually activate the backlight is pretty much function spacebar. And there are three settings to it. So off, mid, and also high for the light and they should do pretty well. Located in the middle of the keyboard is the track point, or what I would call it the G spot because of where it's located. Now, I don't really use it myself, but I do know a fair number of people who still do actually use the track point. And underneath the space bar is the three buttons that support the track point for the mouse clicks. And as for the track pad, it's got a bit of a nice smooth feel to it. It's a bit of a matte feel to that as well. And it's got a nice decent side to it. It's not overly large, but it's actually a decent size to it. And of course it is hinged at the top. So yeah, it will, most of the mechanical part of where it press, the press down is near the bottom. At the top, it's pretty much just flat. You won't be able to do that. Now it does support multi gestures, so it can actually do a lot of the gestures that Windows have. Now on the right hand side of the trackpad is the optional fingerprint reader. One of the features I do like to bring your attention to, which is something that I personally do like, is having the power button located on the right hand side of the computer, rather than where the keyboard side is. And the reason for that is when this computer is in tablet mode, you can actually turn this computer on and off or even wake the computer on, because most of the time the keyboard side is disabled for when it's in tablet mode. The other thing that's really nice while the power button is on the right hand side is when this computer is has its lids closed and you've actually got it docked into a docking station, or plug into a docking adapter, something like this, where it actually does have more USB ports as well as display ports, so it can actually run external screens. But something like this, which is a little more on the cheaper side, they actually don't have a power button, so you can't really mirror the power button. And that's where this really is very useful feature where you can actually turn the computer on or wake the computer up from the side rather than having to open this lid up just to turn it on then close the lid back down. So I do like having the power button on the right hand side there. There are two speakers located on the bottom front of the X13 Yoga and when I test out the maximum volume of the speakers it managed to measure in at 81.8 decibels. So it's not overly loud, but it'll be enough for you to actually do your video conferencing as well as presenting in a cafe. Now, as for the sound quality of the speakers, I'll probably say it's pretty average. It does have a little bit of bass, which did surprise me there. So there is some sort of bass there, but as for the sound of quality there, it's pretty average. You've got the mids and the highs, pretty average, they are balanced. And as for the acoustics, it's pretty much straightforward and that's pretty much it. It's not really mind blowing sounds coming out of the speakers here, but they will do you fine. The X13 comes with a 65 watt power adapter and it is charging through its USB-C port. Now it also comes with a 50 watt hour battery and it does support rapid charge. And what that means is you can charge the battery from zero to 80% in one hour's time. And what I did perform the battery life test for this X13 Yoga and with my battery life test, I do actually do a consistent load for the processor, RAM and hard drive. And I actually put the actual screen brightness to 100% for the first two tests. So when I tested out the battery life in the best performance mode, it managed to get an hour and 35 minutes. And in better performance mode, it managed to get an hour and 45 minutes. Then I dropped the processing load to 50% and also the screen brightness to 50%. And in better battery life mode, it managed to get three hours and 20 minutes. And in battery saving mode, it did manage to get five hours and 13 minutes. Now I also tested this computer in what I call media mode. So pretty much it's connected to Wi-Fi with the screen brightness and the speaker's volume at 50%. And I pretty much was just streaming YouTube the whole entire time and it managed to get nine hours and 13 minutes. So it's actually decent for an average use. The weight of the Lenovo ThinkPad X13 Yoga is 1.25 kilos. When I tested out the temperatures and fan noise of X13 Yoga, 
When I put this computer on load, I found most of the heat was located in the center of the keyboard, specifically where the Y and H key is. And that's unsurprising because that's where the processor sits underneath that area of the keyboard. And the other area that I find that heats up a little bit is where the F12 and home key is. And that's unsurprising because that's where the exhaust sits, which is basically blowing out the rear. When I tested that, the measurements for the temperature, my ambient temperature was 22 degrees Celsius. Now I did the base measurement, which is when the computer is on idle and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 39 degrees Celsius and the fan noise measured in at 31 decibel. So that's pretty much quiet. More than likely the fan wasn't really much spinning much at all. Then I'll put the computer on 20% low, which is average use, which is tasks like office productivity work, streaming videos, as well as surfing the web. And the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 41 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it was 32 decibels at its max. And then I'll put the computer on 50% load and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 50 degrees Celsius and the fan noise hit a maximum of 33 decibels. So still quite quiet, I've got to say. And then I'll put the computer at 100% load and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 52 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it went up to a maximum of 36 decibels and the fan isn't really a high pitch whine sound. I also measured the back cover while this computer was at 100% load and the hottest area measured in at 62.5 degrees Celsius, which is quite hot. So I really wouldn't advise putting this computer while it's on load on your lap. Then again, I won't really advise any computer to be put on your lap while it's on load. Usually these days, a lot of laptops are going quite hot underneath. I also measured this computer while it's in tablet mode with 100% load and on the display side, it measured in the hottest area was 41 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it actually dropped a lot to about 33 decibels. So it's actually gone a lot quiet. And also on the keyboard side, while this is in tablet mode, it measured at a hottest area of 49 degrees Celsius. And of course, the fan noise was still at 33 decibels. As you can see, while it's in tablet mode, it actually slows down the fan quite a lot. So it's actually not that loud. And of course, you will actually get a quite a bit of a performance hit as well, which is not really that bad because more than likely, while you're in tablet mode, you're really just drawing or actually just doing some writing or taking notes. So you're not really pushing the process of that hard at all. Now, I did put it at 100%, so if you're drawing and stuff like that, you probably will quite happily feel this quite a lot, so you won't actually feel it much at all, because I was putting at 100% level, and this is currently in tablet mode, and it is pretty much safe to touch anywhere around. Uh, and if, if you're just doing Word Office or documents, or even just doing Photoshop, uh, or just doing some drawings, this thing won't be hot at all. So I'm just giving you the extremes temperature there so you can actually see what it looks like. Let's have a look at the stability performance of the processor as well as if there is any thermal throttling. Now this X13 yogurt is configured with an i5 10310U processor with a base clock speed of 1.7 gigahertz. Now I've been running this computer on 100% load, so that's the processor, RAM and hard drive running 100% and it's been running for over four hours on load. Now, if the processor is running under 1.7 gigahertz, then we might have thermal throttling. But at the moment, we can see from here, it's been pretty stable between 2.3 gigahertz to about 2.5 gigahertz. So that's been mostly stable at that sort of speed. So it doesn't have any thermal throttling, but it does have a little bit of turbo throttling for sure. But that's doing pretty well Let's see how long the processor is able to maintain a high burst speed for. So I've got a stopwatch and I'm gonna start the process and we'll start it once it drops down below a certain amount. So let's start it off. So at the moment, just gotta get it going and it's going up to about 3.8 gigahertz, 3.9 gigahertz, and it's still at 3.6 now, 3.5, 3.4, 3.3, up to 3.5, 3.3, 3.2, 3.0, .3, and that's probably about a good sign for I will stop it. So you're looking at around about 20 seconds there for to maintain a high burst speed performance before it starts dropping down quite low.
talk about one of the cons that I don't really like about this laptop. And this is not specifically to this one here, but this one also shares this design problem with the thermals. And that is where the exhaust vents are located. It is located on the top right hand corner. And this is more because when I am a right hander, this is a problem that I have. So I'm just gonna grab the pen out here so you can actually demonstrate this. If I'm just wanna try and take some notes, um, I would normally put my hand up right here just to give it support. And I'll actually lay the tablet on my forearm, left forearm that is, okay? Because I'm a right hander. And when I grip it, you can straight away see how I'm gripping this is that's where the exhaust vent sits. So the hot air is actually blowing to my fingers here. Now I can't do any better by actually flipping this around. And then what happens is now I've got the exhaust vent pretty much blowing on my bottom of my forearm where around about my elbow area is. So I can't really win there because that's actually where also where this part gets a little bit heated up. So if I'm taking notes in the field in portrait mode, it's not that fantastic. So you might actually want to actually just change it and then do it in landscape mode and that would hopefully solve some issues. But this is just one of the designs flaws that I don't like having where the exhaust fence sitting on the top right hand corner. Now if you're a left hander, you won't have that problem because as a left hander that you won't be holding where the exhaust fence is. You're actually on the other opposite side. So you'll actually be okay doing both sides there at all. So exhaust fence sitting up here and you're still down here. So as a left-hander, this is quite fine. But as a right-hander, this is quite of an annoyance there because I'm can i I'm grabbing the hottest area. You can grab it on the bottom here, but that's really difficult to actually hold this as well because I don't normally like to give it a nice good support. This is quite a bit. It's very sturdy still though. Um, that's a, Which comes to another area I'm just gonna talk about is actually its build quality. So the build quality is fantastic as you would expect for ThinkPad. These things are built tough. These actually take through, you know, pass through 12 military testers for this. And of course there is quite a bit of a spill resistance for liquid, but don't try and still put liquid through it. It still is a computer. So, but it does can survive a little bit of a spill there. And of course the build construction is fantastic all the way around. You've got a nice sort of smooth feel to it. It does grab a bit of fingerprints, unfortunately, I've got to say. And as for the hinge, they are metal, which is, they're actually really good metal, I've got to say that. On that. So I don't think they're gonna have so much of a hinge problem there at all. And these things can pretty much take quite a bit of a beating there, so I've got to say. Uh, so, and that's the same with the keyboard. Let me just bring up the keyboard as well. And there's not too much flex in, no, there's not actually much flex in there. I, like, I can feel it, may you might see it, but there's not much flex in the keyboard. That takes a fair bit of brilliant. If you find this video informative or enjoyed it, smack that like button for me. It does support my channel as well. And if you have done already, subscribe to my channel, hit that subscribe button bottom of the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfection in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.